everybody, and welcome back to the Thunder and Lightning Gaming News Podcast. I know, it's a very similar name. It's like one word off. I'm Thunder, and joining me today is a very special guest... Dr. Payne. It's Dr. Payne from Dr. Payne's Pointless Product Test, as seen on Thunder and Lightning <laughs> Gaming, as seen on YouTube. Um, if you want to see uh, more Dr. Payne, tune in uh, six days from now, <laughs> and there will be a new episode. Was well, it, what is it going to be about? I don't know. Um, so we're here to talk about video games, and by golly, <laughs> what a week it was. So this, okay, here's the here's the problem with this podcast sometimes is that it's a bi-weekly podcast so sometimes like multiple conferences in a row will happen and we have to talk about all of them that did not happen this time essentially the only news we have to talk about is this big huge disgusting inappropriate nintendo direct that we all had to sit through um just kidding it was really great but there was one blemish right there in the in the in the middle uh that we're going to talk about um but first before we get to news um um we're going to do opposite of last podcast. I'm going to talk about video games I've played. Then I'm going to yeah. go to you. Cause, so good. it's me talking, you talking, and then me talking for the Makes news. Sense. Makes um, sense. So uh, I've been playing. I finally caved, and I downloaded Civilization Six. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not going to talk about it too much just because I can only assume that uh, it, it, Civilization is fun to play. But it's boring to watch, and I can only assume even more boring to listen to people talk about. Uh, but it's good. I actually won. I've played three matches, um, and one of them I just totally ruined, so I stopped early. Uh, one of them I lost, uh, but one of them I actually won. And it's interesting because I was trying to do a science victory, and then like uh, somebody won cutscene started, and I was like, no, but it was me, and I had won a <laughs> cultural victory. Oh, <laughs> Okay. I always, I always turn, uh, turn limit off because yeah. the way Civ works is like at the end of turn five hundred, it's like who won. I I do that too for similar games. Yeah, I'm not interested in in doing that. I wanna I wanna win of my own accord. Yeah, and the have you so you have you played Civilization? I've played Civ three. And oh, that's okay. The most recent one that I've played. Interesting. So I really got, I got really into five. Yeah. Uh, back when I was going to college, everyone I hung out with was playing Five, so I downloaded it too. I got real into that. Five is really good. Yeah. Uh, every time I got, like, I think I want to play Civ today. Uh, I would always play Five. Uh, Six is definitely, I'll say this: Six is definitely more user friendly, okay. but not so much so user friendly that it's like. So this is for babies, you know? That's good. It's it's definitely, like, still a very complicated board that's game, for lack of a better word. That's good. Um, but there is some stuff they changed. Like, for example, um, in 5, when you have a worker, you just you, you send them to, like, make a farm, right? And it'll be like, the farm will be done in three turns. And then when they're done, it's like, now what do you want them to do? This time around, and I like this better, I don't know what other people are thinking, but the way workers work is you send them to make a farm, they make it instantly, but that's one of three jobs they can do before they disappear forever. Oh, okay. So if you, you can't have, what I usually do, one worker just do the whole Popping town. Yeah. You, you have to really pick and choose when you want to make workers okay. because obviously making workers takes production time that you could be making wonders and stuff like that. The science victory... They've changed significantly because it used to be just get enough science points. Now it's first civilization to colonize Mars. Oh, um, okay. I don't know what I did wrong. I was unsuccessful. I could not colonize Mars. Don't know what I did. Thought I did everything right. Thought I took all the right steps. But the option to colonize Mars was not there when I thought it was going to be there. Uh, and at this point, I had already won <laughs> at a cultural it victory 20 turns ago. Uh, so not quite sure what I did. Okay. Incorrect. But, oh, also the best part of the game, I totally forgot... Everything, you know how Civ does that thing where it's like, you got a new science. You, you know, advanced in pottery. Here's a paragraph <laughs> on pottery. That paragraph is yeah. re read out loud. You can skip it, of course. But it is read out loud by none other than uh, Sean Bean from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Meant for this. I didn't either. It was one of those things where I was like. This guy really sounds like Sean Bean. <laughs> Let me do a quick Google. Oh, it's because it is Sean Bean. That would make sense why this person sounds like Sean Bean. 
so yeah, needless to say, for my first game, more often than not, I let those uh, I let those those little paragraphs play out because <laughs> I was like, this is this is Sean Bean. I gotta respect Sean Bean. <laughs> Sean Bean is here, guys. <laughs> I think maybe that was their plan. They're like, no one's reading these. How do we? No one's reading the. No one's reading the t- the the like nine sentence long <laughs> Terry Pratchett quote that we that we put on screen when they when they do writing. Um, no, so that's been going good. Um, they changed who America was. It was George Washington. Now it's Teddy Roosevelt. Oh, which is exciting. Okay. Um. Uh, <laughs> I did a. They, they have a lot of cool maps this time, and one of the maps is a dual map. Where it's y- very tiny, and it's you versus one other continent. Mm-hmm. And if you've ever played Civ, the way it works is there's like a fog of war, and mm-hmm. not until you discover who they are do you know who you're playing with. If you set them to random, uh, I set up a dual map, and um, I'm like, oh, I wonder who it's going to be. I finally find somebody, and it's none other than Gandhi. And then <laughs> horror, <laughs> terror oh, is no. what I feel. <laughs> Gandhi was like. <laughs> Literally, like, I don't know the exact number, but, like, he, he would come up to me and he'd be like, you don't have that many military units or <laughs> you're not scared that you're going to die. And then I would make more military units. And he's like, I feel threatened. You made too many military <laughs> units. You're going to attack me. <laughs> and it's like, dude, just <laughs> I wish there was a way to be like, I am trying to do a science victory. <laughs> do not worry about my military. <laughs> Gandhi, I need you to chill out right now. <laughs> Like <laughs> Gandhi, you're a, Gandhi, you're a little aggro. <laughs> my, my, my military units are in my town, in my city state, and not yours. Um, I've also been playing Act Razor. Uh, we're going to talk about this a bit more because it was part of the Nintendo Direct. But okay. out of nowhere, during the Nintendo Direct, they announce uh, that they're remaking Act Razor. Act Razor is a SNES game, and I will talk more about what it is in a sec. But okay. essentially, they were like. Hey, remember this NES, SNES game that one, no one talks about, two, is super rare and you can't get it anywhere else, and three, Anthony has wanted for his whole life? Uh, well, we're remaking it and it's out today. So, oh my God. I downloaded I didn't it. I didn't know about any of this. Yeah, so I downloaded it and then I proceeded to play it for four hours straight. <laughs> uh, it's so fucking fun. So, here's how Act Razor works there's two gameplay sections, there's a 2D section where you play a person with a sword and you fight monsters yep. and then those are broken up by city building segments where you play a deity who's who's building a city and the city gets attacked and you can attack in like indirect and direct ways okay. um and i so i i that's basically all i knew about the game and i thought that it would be you know one 2D section, one city building section, back and forth. Yeah. That's not the case. It's one 2D fighting section, like three hours of city building, and then another 2D fighting section. Okay. Um, and the way it works is you only have control over certain things. You have control over natural disasters, and you have control over where the people build roads. So the way it works is you have to tell them to build roads, and then they do, and from there, as long as they're a road there, everything they build is up to them. Interesting. Then, as you progress forward and your civ level increases, and you can, like, turn your, you know, shitty farm into a better farm, the only way to do that is to destroy it and have them rebuild it. So that's where the natural disasters come in. You cause an earthquake or a thunderstorm. It completely ruins half of the, uh, the city. But it was intentional because now they're going to rebuild it. But will you have enough time to rebuild it before a horde of monsters comes and attacks the village? Um, and that's essentially everything. I like it a lot. I really didn't expect. Interesting concept. I didn't expect it to make a comeback like this. It's one of those SNES games that, like, people who play it are like, "Yeah, it was good," and people who haven't played it and want to play it are out of luck because it's like a lot of money <laughs> online. So I'm glad that this remake is here and it's as good as it was. And, like, because it's not an SNES game anymore, there's, like, a story that I can only assume wasn't this in-depth as it was last time. Mm. Uh, And they said that there's new side quests and new boss battles and stuff. And uh, the first, you know, three and a half hours while I was playing level one, I thought for some reason that there was three levels. There's actually six levels. So... Uh, I can only imagine that this game was not a lot of gameplay. this long on the SNES, but wow. maybe I'm wrong. 
like I said, I've known about this game, never played it uh, until now. And I'm glad they did this because it's very fun. It's called Act Razor's Renaissance, and it's only $30. Buy it now. Buy it, buy it <laughs> right now and tell me uh, how you liked it. Um, but it's just, it's cool. There's, there's, I, I have a, I have a fascination with games that do this, games that have like dungeon fighting segments and then you use the resources you gathered in those segments to build a town. Mm. Like, have you ever heard of or played Dark Cloud for the PlayStation? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. No. It's, it's, it's definitely like the next version of this, you go into the dungeon and the dungeon is like automatically uh, 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 randomly generated yep. and you fight monsters. And essentially the, 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 the whole way it works is like, you can't leave until you've defeated all the monsters, but also there's treasure chests down here and the treasure chests have resources for the city building portion. Mm. And then the city building portion is very quest based. It's like you you talk to the citizens and they're like, I want my house to be near water, but not near this other citizen. So you have to kind of like make the perfect town. And yeah. the first one is Puzzles is very thing. much just like, here's this house. Uh, this is this person's house. Put it where you need to go. And there's certain ways that you can't make the town, but there's it's because of the, if you want to get like 100% like requests or whatever. Yeah. The second one really opened it up where it's literally like, you can customize everything. You can color the houses. You can, you know, you can literally make everything. The fencing, the river. You're not limited by anything other than the resources you have. Okay. And the the requests that were a, a main part of the first one are, like, kind of gone. The problem with Dark Cloud 2 is that they added way too much. There's, like, a golfing mini game, And uh, f okay. f you have to take pictures of stuff. So there's just, like, uh, there's there's and there's, like, a fishing tournament type thing. So there's just a lot. But it, it's just sort of the same. It's basically just like the PS2 version of the type of game that ActRaiser is. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't see that a lot. And I really like games like that personally. And I'm glad that ActRaiser is back. I hope ActRaiser being back is as important to this subgenre of video games that I think it will be. Um, but we'll see. That was, that's my... And, right. and, that, and there's the battle. <laughs> um, how was your, uh, what did, did you play games this week? Um, I did, uh, my time this week for gaming has essentially been centered on trying to squeeze in time for the Diablo 2 remaster. Oh my God. Yes. Out. Yes. That released this week. It did. Yeah. It I, I own it. I just haven't played it yet cause I've been really busy. Yeah. No, Diablo 2 definitely was like one of the games of my childhood. Um, Diablo 1 less so, mostly Diablo 2. Um, and um, I've got at least a couple hours now I was able to get in nice. for the, the remaster, and it looks, like, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, play, I played the beta. Haven't played the, the real game yet. Um, what What is your opinion of 3? Are you someone who liked 3? Not as much or I wasn't drawn as strongly or as frequently back to it as mm. I was for two. Um, and I know that a lot of people dislike three a lot for the, f the um, aesthetic and the feel of the game. Okay. It's, uh, they've, it's like a bit more cartoony and bright and goes away from kind of the gothic kind of stuff that two had yeah which i think they're going back to for four i don't know too much about diablo four um but uh diablo four is the game that everyone got mad at that one guy about right isn't that the don't you guys have phones meme that is diablo what is it called? oh that's not four um it's a different sp it's a specific mobile game oh okay diablo immortal Oh, okay. That one's called, which still hasn't come out. Um, oh, really? I don't know what's going on with that. That was years ago. And <laughs> I think they're just like, oh, God, let's just not release this for a long time. <laughs> this isn't going to go well. Um, so I don't know what's going on with that at all. Um, so they're developing that, uh, maybe, still. <laughs> and then developing Diablo 4. Who knows how long this is going to take? Yeah. I don't know. What. I mean, just the fact that they took production time away from 4 to remake 2 tells me that we're still a, a long ways away from 4 yeah. being a thing. 
and I I don't know if any of the different things that are going on with Blizzard right now are, are Im- is impacting the the teams. I mean, it things. probably it is. Probably is. So who knows what's going on? You know, um, but uh, no, I have definitely enjoyed the time I've spent. I see, like the moments that I feel like I get with a, a release of a game like this is like similar to like um, the like first couple weeks of like Pokemon Go coming out where it's like the world came together and everyone was just like gathered and enjoying and having this like moment together like I was getting online in Diablo 2 Resurrected I yeah. think is the name of it and like getting into group games with like eight people where it's like everyone's like I haven't done this for like 15 years that's awesome and it's like let's go like d- d- you know do this quest I'm like, yeah. yes, it's a really great feeling that's yeah. awesome that's what I was hoping would happen something yeah. like that yeah. That's that's the that's the goal, you know. Yeah. I have an interesting relationship with Diablo. I didn't play two. Um, I played three though. Um, and when they announced two, I pre-ordered it, and the pre-order for two came with three, so I started playing three again recently. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then when the beta dropped for two, I played that. I can definitely see that they are like, they definitely both have the skeleton of a Diablo game, but they're very different. Like the first thing I noticed, yeah. of course, was the fact that you have like a Resident Evil 4 style inventory into where it's like you you can only hold a certain number of stuff. And that I feel like is a top-down MMO staple at this point. Like that's present in Path of Exile and a a bunch of other games that I've played. Um, But that was not present in Diablo 3. And it's sort of like, it gets a little like confusing at times with like Mm. wait which one of these was i wearing now i have to compare all of these to and like i get it i get why they did it but it's definitely you can also really feel like and i don't know what i mean by this i never know what i mean by this but you can definitely feel like the dungeons and dragons influences in in diablo 2 and not interesting not in diablo 3 i definitely get what you mean diablo 3 feels more mainstream more commercialized um but Diablo 2 is also fun. I don't know. It's it's yeah. in, it's interesting. They're like two different genres almost. I, I, I feel that. Yeah. No, they they are very different like yeah, experiences just like going through the game and playing it. Yeah. Um both enjoyable. I'm sure some people are drawn more to others one yeah. one than the other. I feel like I'm drawn to Diablo 2. There's a lot of nostalgia coming into that. So yeah. That could be the main driver of it. Um I don't know. I've been enjoying it so far. So, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. No, I've been excited for that. That was one of those games where I like I heard about it and I was like, I'll I'll probably get that. And then I thought it was out, so I went to go buy it. And then it was like, it's not out for two more months. I was like, how was I so <laughs> off? But I want it, so I guess I'll pre-order it. And then this happened. This happened with Watch Dogs Legion as well. So I I pre-ordered Diablo Two Resurrected, and all of a sudden my PS Five is downloading Diablo Three, and I'm like, what? And then when I got Watch Dog Legion. I started really liking it, so I downloaded the season pass, and all of a sudden my PS5 starts downloading the shitty one. It starts <laughs> downloading Watch Dogs 1, and I was like, oh no, I've been backdoored into downloading this shitty game that no one wants to play. <laughs> quick, get it onto his system. <laughs> quick, quick. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I'm so sorry if I was way loud. I was turning myself up and not you. Oh, you're really, oh, you're adjusting the volume during that? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Hang on. Test. One, two, three. Test. Hello. Now you say something. Test. One, two, three. This is me. Oh, my God. Look, now everything's things. perfect. I'm so sorry. Go. I was way louder than you for a whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and now, and now well. everything is... Because you have this one. Okay, so you... Oh, my God. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. I was looking at myself. And I'm like, why am I so loud? <laughs> That's my bad. I'll try to fix that in editing. Um, But I'm still going to be clipping a little. Uh, Sorry about that. Um, okay, let's talk about news, baby. Have we been talking for 20 news, minutes? Baby. Holy shit, okay. Wow, really? Uh, let's let's talk about there's, news. There's definitely a, yeah, core. Well, thing. three minutes of that was us talking about the lighthouse. <laughs> that got cut out. Um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, oh, article in, okay, hold on. I have to go to my bookmarks uh, mm-hmm. real quick. Uh, where do you do that? It's this one, mm-hmm. and then I do this, and then here we go. Okay, so there was a Nintendo Direct on Year of Our Lord, September 23rd. Um, and I'm going to, like I normally do, I'm going to go through everything they talked about, uh, and I'm going to talk about the ones I don't care about briefly, and I'm going to talk about the ones I do care about a lot 
Yeah. A lot. Uh, so they open the. Keep in mind, I was like, I was ready for the new Smash Brothers character. I was like, it's gonna be announced at this one. I was certain of it. Um, they open the direct with a uh, DLC for Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, it's called Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Um, yeah. And I don't care about this. But what was interesting about it is that it said it was coming out in 2022, which put a bad mood, put bad taste in my mouth right away because um, the little blurb before it started said that they were going to talk about games that were coming out winter of 2021. Uh, so they that was definitely a lie. Uh, immediately. Uh, in, 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 and y- you will see as we go f- through that that was just a bullface lie. Uh, they talked more about Mario Party Superstars. I don't know if you heard about this, but they're the people who made Super Mario Party and ostensibly the people who made 50 Clubhouse games are making a game called Mario Party Superstars. It's going to be classic boards from the first four okay. or first three, the N64 I Mario think Parties. I know about this. Um, so they showed off that. They showed off some, you know, new playable characters. They showed off some classic boards. The cake is back. Um, then they showed off a new game uh, called Voice of Cards, the Isle... The, holy shit. Voice of Cards, the Isle Dragon Roars. That's what it's called. So okay. it's an RPG uh, similar to, you know, Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest, but everything is cards. All the battling is cards. All the terrain is cards. Like, they were literally, like, moving on cards like it was, a like, a board game. Okay. So literally everything is cards. Everything is cards. Like, every town is cards. Every town folk, you step on their card, they have stats or whatever. Uh, it looked interesting. This is the um, Everything is Cards universe. Disco Elysium. What did you say? I said this is the Everything is Cards universe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because they're like, they're not like, there's no kayfabe. Like, it, the game is played on a table in the game. Like, it's literally like a fake card game, but with real, I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, Disco Elysium Final Cut. It's just the version of that with all the DLC. Okay. Which is releasing. Um, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Do you know about this? No. It's a it's a um Musou game. What do they call those? It's a Warriors game. It's like Hyrule Warriors or Dragon Quest Warriors or uh Got it. Um I'm there. Dynasty or, Warriors. Uh, Fire Emblem. Yeah. yeah, Dynasty Wars. Dynasty Wars yeah. essentially. Yeah, one of those. Yeah. Um so it's it's getting a second wave of DLC. This game came out like a year and a half ago. Uh and it's getting another wave of DLC. Also, okay. disappointingly enough, I found out that this game which takes place 100 years before the events of Breath of the Wild uh is non-canonical. And I don't know why they would do that. I don't know why they wouldn't just make it canon. It's very interesting. Okay. Um, this announcement caught me off guard, and apparently this was a thing before that I didn't know about, but they announced a game called Chocobo GP. Holy shit. Chocobo GP. So this is a Final Fantasy racing game where you play as ancillary characters like Moogle and Chocobo and stuff like that. Um, and apparently this is a thing that they did before. Um, I don't remember. I've never heard this. of this. I don't know if this was maybe a mini game in one of the Final Fantasies that I didn't focus too hard on, but they're essentially making Mario Kart, but with uh, but with Final Fantasy characters, and like I'm down for that. Okay. Um, you're you're okay. You're good. Okay, there we go. Um, my cat's been puking a lot. Might happen in a couple moments here. Um, okay. So I don't know if you saw this video, but I made a video about a year ago about Kirby. And the video was about how Kirby doesn't have a 3D platformer yet. And I described how, you know, Mario and Mega Man and, like, everyone who was a 2D platformer has a 3D one except Kirby. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then I basically described what a 3D uh, Kirby game could look like. Could look like. And they essentially announced it at this Pokemon Direct. Um, Delivered. Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Uh, It's going to be, like, a post-apocalyptic setting. And I guess what I'm saying is, where's my money? Uh, give me royalties or I will sue you. You'll never <laughs> see me coming. I'm going to get the same lawyer that Disney got to sue Dead Mouse, uh, and we're coming for you. The next Mario Golf is going to be called... The f- title of the next Mario Golf is going to be Mario Golf, colon, subscribe to Thunder and Lightning Gaming. Yeah. Uh, and I know it's an unconventionally long title, but like, you know... Well, that's oh, okay. that's kind of like in vogue these days. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um... So, hilariously enough, there was an announcement for Animal Crossing New Horizons, um, and the announcement was essentially that in October, there's going to be an entire Nintendo Direct about Animal Crossing New Horizons, a game that a lot of people thought were, was completely dead. I didn't think there was any more support coming for that. Yeah, um, so Brewster is coming back. The like, I think he's like a pigeon. 
who owns a coffee shop. Oh. And his coffee shop was like in the bottom of the in the in the downstairs of the museum. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's coming back. They teased that, but then they were like more info in October, and I was like, cool. Uh, okay. No one I know has played Animal Crossing for months. <laughs> yeah. Um. Just a lot of you know YouTube video thumbnails of people being like, "Is this too late?" And I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> yes, it is." <laughs> the answer is yes. Uh, they announced some Done. Mario Golf Super Rush stuff, of course, to be later named Mario Golf. Subscribe to Thunder Lane Gaming. Right. Um, they announced that Disney Magical World Two, a uh, uh, two uh, 3DS game for children, is coming to Switch. It looks terrible because they didn't remaster it. It's just a oh god, a 3DS game. Okay. Uh, so f- interesting story. Last time we had this podcast, we talked about a Sony press conference that they did, where they announced that they are remaking Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. It's going to be called Star Wars Knights of the yeah. Old Republic remake. Um, they didn't show any gameplay of that, but interestingly enough, they announced that the Switch is not getting that. The Switch is getting the original, unremastered Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Um, which is interesting that this announcement came so close to the other one. I'm sure they're basically unrelated, but it is weird that they were like, a brand new, (laughs) old, but new Knights of the Old Republic experience is coming, and Switch was like, and we have the old (laughs) one. Uh, They announced Dying Light 2 Stay Human is coming to Switch. Don't play it because it's going to be the cloud version. Uh, which means that the console has to be docked oh. and you are streaming the game from a from a, a server. Do not buy this game. Uh, they're doing that with more and more games now. I don't know why they were doing that. A lot of, man, I'm realizing like a lot of like announcements that are like have things to do with things we've talked about on this channel before. Um, they announced a game a while back called, check. called Project Triangle Strategy. And I just thought that was such a hilarious name. It tickled me so much. And also, these are the people who made Octopath Traveler, which, if you don't remember, <laughs> for two years was called Project Octopath Traveler. Yeah. Well, they announced on the 23rd that this game got a real title. It's called Triangle Strategy. <laughs> uh, and I laughed harder than I've ever laughed in, like, maybe the whole week. I was like, yes, I was right. Um, they also, this was surprising to me, the developers over at triangle strategy um they had a demo that a lot of people played and at the end of that demo that i apparently didn't get to um they had a they had a survey and they actually listened to feedback they literally had like these were the four things that were complained about the most we fixed it look what we did and i was like wow okay that because like it was this weird Respect. cross-section of, like, they actually listened to people's complaints, and it looks like it genuinely made the game a better experience. One of the complaints was, we'd like to be able to change the camera. I didn't know that wasn't a thing. Um, they released the eighth trailer for Metroid Dread, a Metroid game that'll uh, be coming out uh, in a week or two. Um, still looks good. Stop showing it, please. Uh, in one of the bigger announcements, um, they announced that the... Nintendo Switch Online, which is how you play games online. Yeah. Um, it has and has since the beginning. It has a small library of NES and SNES games, uh, and there's going to be. They called it an expansion pack. Essentially, what it is is it's the same deal, the same online, except you're going to pay a little more money for it if you want. And if you do, you get access to not only a library of Nintendo 64 games, but also a library of Sega Genesis games. Oh. Uh, the Sega Genesis, the the N sixty four has been rumored for a bit. Uh, the Genesis one came out of completely nowhere. Um, lots of exciting games that they announced. Banjo Kazooie is going to be a part of this. Uh, Sin and Punishment, Pokemon Snap. Um, you know, both Zeldas, o- Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask are going to make it on there. Uh, and the Genesis stuff was like stuff you'd expect. Gunstar Heroes is coming. I love Gunstar Heroes. Wow, okay. It's like one of my favorite games of all time. I- um, I need to look at the list of games, actually. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, I don't... That's really interesting to I don't me. have a full list here. Oh, my God, Dr. Mario 64 is coming. I, like, am the only person who has ever talked about <laughs> that game and how good it is. Um, that game has metal Dr. Mario, and oh. no one cares about that except me. 
Uh, the, it also has a vampire Wario, but that might have been a little bit of a, a jumping the shark. But we're not going to talk about him. <laughs> we're going to focus on how cool Doctor Nettle Doctor Mario is. Um, yeah, Echo the Dolphin, a couple Street Fighters, everything you'd expect. It's just like what I didn't expect was this, the Sega Genesis yeah, part of it. That's really cool. Uh, and of course, like they did last time, they have released USB N64 and Genesis controllers that you can use mm -hmm. to play these games. Um, my question is, does it work with Smash Brothers? <laughs> as as my question always is. Um, they announced Shadowrun Trilogy. This is an old game that's coming to Switch. Um, they announced a Castlevania Advanced Collection, which is the four Game Boy Advance Castlevania games, now in one okay. package. All right. So it's um, Circle of the Moon, Harmony of Dissonance, Aria of Sorrow, and excuse me, the Game Boy Advance port of Dracula X. It is now easier to play the entire Castlevania series from start to finish than it ever was. Uh, the only difficult part of it is the Nintendo 64 games. But fuck, who knows? Maybe that'll change when these games come to... to, to when Nintendo 64 games go out to Switch, you know? Yeah. Uh, Act Razor Renaissance, we've already talked about that. Uh, Delta Rune. Do you know what Delta Rune is? I do know what Delta Rune is. Delta Rune Chapter 2 is out. And it is out on not only PC, but also Switch. I did not know that. Uh, yeah, I have not uh, played it yet. I have not played Chapter 2 yet. I've played Chapter 1. Um, yeah. But Chapter 2 is out. I really thought that Chapter 1 was just going to be a demo and we'd get a full game. But I'm okay with this, too. Random chapters. Okay. It's very. It feels very Five Nights at Freddy's. How, like, it's like Five Nights at Freddy 1 was cool. I wonder if there will be a sequel. And then, like, there was. And it's like, oh, okay, cool, I'll play that. Uh, except... Delta Rune's way better than Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to You're gonna get, it. You're going to get an army of fanboys coming at you <laughs> for that. but Yeah, an army of 12 people <laughs> listening to this podcast uh, who give a shit about Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, because, yeah. Um, okay, so then at this point in the press release, oh, okay. in the, I mean in the, uh, uh, the, the Nintendo Direct, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto shows up and he's like, Koizumi, shut up! I'm gonna talk now, essentially. And every time, okay, here's what, here's the problem with Shigeru Miyamoto, father of my childhood, inventor of so many iconic series: Star yeah. Fox, Mario, Zelda, not not Kirby. He's done a lot. Um, just every time he shows up and he's like, "I have a special announcement," it's always bullshit. His <laughs> announcements are always like, "I killed Paper Mario again," or. There's a Nintendo theme park. You can't go, though. All the food has mushrooms in it. <laughs> so he shows up, and I was like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Star Fox is dead, isn't it? And he talks about uh, the Mario movie. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Illumination, the studio behind Minions and Secret Life of Pets, is making a Mario movie. They have been for a while now. We have an official release date. It's December 21st, 2022. No trailer, but we do have a cast listing. Uh, notice... How when I go over the cast listing, I will not pick up my phone because I have, in fact, memorized it because I am so fervently angry at it. Um, so let's talk about them one at a time. Okay. We have Chris Pratt as Mario. <laughs> Already a big fuck up right, <laughs> right at the start. I want to know the conversation in the room around this decision. And is it entirely just driven by... People know who Chris Pratt is. It's, it's got to be, right? And, and that's the end of the conversation. Right. Like, nothing intrinsic about Mario and that character and that voice and who that is. I mean, part of the conversation has to be, and fuck Charles Martinet, right? I, yeah. <laughs> the, the man who is this character... And, has, and been has, for, been, has been for the last 30 years. The lifetime 30, of, 30, of, yeah, 30 how, years. Who, of all, all of us who have been growing up with this, who this person is. There's been two people who have voiced Mario. The late and great Captain Lou Albano, uh, WWE Hall of Famer, uh, voiced him in the TV show. Right, okay. And then okay. some years later, when they made Mario 64 and they gave Mario a voice... They hired Charles Martinet and then never fired him yeah. because he's iconic. He has been Mario this entire time, and s since '95. <laughs> and I do, I just don't get it. I don't get it either. Um, it's got to be, and it's the most backwards way of thinking. And but I understand that it's 
that Nintendo and Illumination came together to make this decision. Like it makes it makes so much sense that it was them too. But the decision doesn't make sense because it it's it's like okay, if this is on a billboard, people are gonna recognize Chris Pratt's name, and it's the most backwards logic because you have people who have were not gonna see that movie, and they're like, oh, Chris Pratt's in it though. Well, I'll go see it. But then you have people like me and you who are like, hey. Fuck this. Yeah. This sucks. I don't want to see like, Chris Pratt play Mario. It's it's kind of insulting. And I mean, it's it it'll get more insulting the more we go down the cast <laughs> list because uh, th- th- we're not done talking about no, Charles Martinet. I And, you know, there's there's a larger conversation to be had about the lack of like an actual voice acting industry in like North America yeah. right now. And, yeah, definitely. Um, how it's just like, just get a famous person right. who like potentially doesn't really have any talent for this in particular. But they have a name. But they have a name. They have the name Chris Pratt. And <laughs> it just doesn't work. And you look at other countries who are doing this effectively, voice acting is like, I'm just going to go to Japan because that's mm. kind of an obvious comparison to make where like yeah. voice acting industry, very pro- pro- right. pro- proliferant and like, you have people who specialize in that and they do mm-hmm. it really well. And there's also like something to be said about Japanese legacy casting. Like Frieza mm-hmm. has been voiced by the same dude since the incarnation of Frieza and yeah. he never has changed ever, even though this guy's like super old now, right? Yeah. Um th- I just I'm so frustrated with the American voice acting, like the way that the American filmmakers treat the voice acting industry. Yeah. Have you seen the Sonic the Hedgehog movie? Yeah, I have. The Sonic of the Hedgehog movie is fantastic, and I love it. Um, and the poster's really good, and I wanted to get it because it's I wanted to put it on my wall. But I didn't because on the poster, there are two names, and the names are uh, Jim Carrey and the guy who played Cyclops. I forget his name. Uh, James Marston. Yeah. Those are the two names on the poster. Not uh, Ben Schwartz, voice of Sonic the Hedgehog, <laughs> titular character. <laughs> the movie is called Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog is 60% of the poster. Ben Schwartz's name isn't on it. I, yeah. Um, There's just no respect. I heard a very interesting story from Tara Strong, voice of Timmy Turner and Chowder and just so many other iconic characters, Raven from Teen Titans. She told a story about uh, the Little Mermaid 2, the one that was about the daughter, because mm-hmm. she is the voice of Melody, the daughter of oh. Ariel in that movie. I didn't know that. And here's what happened. So there's this thing in voice acting that I didn't know about, and I forget what it's called, so I apologize. But when they'll they'll hire a real tenured voice actor like Tara Strong to come in and do the whole movie. And the reason she did that is so that the person, the famous name, like Chris Pratt, who's really going to come in and voice Melody, can match what she's doing. And she said that the reason voice actors do this like the 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 reason they agree to this is because sometimes they will say that was so good we're just going to use your performance and that's exactly what happened with uh um little mermaid 2 little she was supposed to be replaced with by Britney Spears but she did oh. such a good job that it is her voice in the final cut and she is melody um it's just a fun little story yeah <laughs> I- um I mean, it's sad that that has to be what they have to do, right? To and like, are you are you are you trying to tell me that they're not going to do that again with Charles Martinet and Chris Pratt? <laughs> you know, it, like, I don't know, like, I Chris Pratt, Chris Pratt plays the same character in every movie he's ever been in, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and now he's going to be Mario. Also, some fun statistics that I looked up: Charles Martinet got. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for Super Mario Galaxy Two. Chris Pratt for the second Lego Movie got ten million dollars. Oh if I'm Charles Martinet, I am furious. I, I despise Chris Pratt at this point because <laughs> I just lost so much money to that fool. Um, so Princess Peach is going to be played by Anya Taylor Joy, star of Queen's Gambit. This is the only one I don't have an issue with. <laughs> I'm also fine with that. Um, yeah. Uh, Bowser is going to be played by Jack Black. <laughs> not the not who I would pick. <laughs> I we're going to be saying that a lot. I mean, uh, but yeah, not my pick. I like Jack Black as a person. Jack, <laughs> Jack Black is living a great life. Yeah, he seems cool. I don't know why he's Bowser. I don't know why he's Bowser either. Um, Bowser clearly has like. A voice that's not Jack Black. I don't know. It, it's redundant at this point, but I just like, I don't know. 
<laughs> just bad picks all around. Luigi's going to be played by Charlie Day from <laughs> It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Um, so good about that, I, don't I guess. Um, Toad is going to be voiced by Keegan Michael Key from <laughs> Key and Peel. Um, and Seth Rogen is going to be playing <laughs> Donkey Kong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, just it's just a bad time over here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> there's just not oh there's just God. not much going for this movie right now. I'm sure it'll look great, um, but, but like it's just so frustrating that this is like what I know about their approach to this right now. Yeah, and like between this and knowing it's made by like Illumination specifically, I'm like I'm not loving the mix of what's going into no. this property at the moment. They said. Mario movie animated and I was like okay yeah and then they said illumination I was like fuck <laughs> they're the people who make the minions yeah and I was gonna say trolls but that's DreamWorks um and it's just like illumination kind of also al- always makes the same sort of movie I feel like they do they have found a formula and they found a cheap way to make these movies yeah and that's what they do I'm sure they were the cheapest animation studio that they could have gone to to produce this. I mean, if your options are Illumination, Pixar, and DreamWorks, then yeah. Yeah. Um, for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, there were some other voices that they announced. Uh, Kevin Michael Richardson, who is an actual voice actor, uh, is going to be playing Kamek. The little witch dude oh, that follows Bowser, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Fred Armisen is going to be playing Cranky Kong. <laughs> so that's I forgot about that. So that's neat. <laughs> also, I didn't recognize the actor, but someone I didn't recognize is playing Foreman Spike. You know, beloved character <laughs> Foreman Spike, main character of Wrecking Crew that came out two years before the original Mario game. <laughs> that character is going to be in this movie. Oh, and then the best part of the casting, Charles Martinet. They brought his picture up, and I really expected them to be like, and we've killed Charles Martinet. He'll never <laughs> be Mario again. Um, but they said that Charles Martinet uh, is going to be surprise cameos throughout. <laughs> uh, for those of you who can't see us, which I, is everybody, Emery just sort of, like, gave up. <laughs> I, yeah, I, <laughs> like, God. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, I feel... I don't even want to know Charles Martinet. And I like mean, it's got to be Wario and Waluigi, right? Or baby sure. Mario and baby Luigi, because like, there's the six characters he voices. If he's just going to be like pedestrian on the side of the street, because I can only assume the plot of this movie is Mario finds his way into the real world somehow, um, then like fuck them. But like yeah. you could at least get him to play the character. He's played six characters. Mario, Luigi, baby Mario, baby Luigi, Wario and Waluigi. And like if his surprise cameos aren't like – uh. But that's the thing. Like, none of these characters talk. They have voices, but they don't talk. Like, like yeah. uh, Shigeru Miyamoto was like, Mario's going to talk a lot of this movie. That's one of the reasons we got Chris Pratt. And it's like, but Charles Marnay can say more words than, like, <laughs> Yahoo, here we go, and spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so fascinating to me, like... That's right. Charles Martinet is the voice of Mario, and he's never done anything else ever since he got this job. Every racing game, every Smash Brothers, every phone game, it's all him. Uh, and then they're making a high-budget yeah. Illumination Studios animated movie, and they're like, not this time. No. no. <laughs> Charles is like, hey, you know, I'm really excited to you know, really expand this. Like, oh, Charles. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, we forgot <laughs> about Charles. <laughs> we forgot to pick Charles up from soccer practice. <laughs> what do you think the conversation was like? with Charles. Do you think it's literally like like someone someone higher up like on the same level of Shigeru Miyamoto calling him and being like so obviously you're not getting this role or was it do you think he was ever part of the conversation like do you think part of this was like well we're going to get him and then Illumination was like well what if we got Chris Pratt or something like that? I'm sure at least in early stages there was a a conversation around like Okay, he's obviously the voice of Mario. Like, we're going to be going with that. And then there was some direction on, like, we need this to be specifically marketable for what we're doing here. And our take on what that means is... Is Hollywood, uh, you know, tenured uh, name Chris Pratt. Yeah. And so I don't know who the hell had, like, pulled the trigger on that strategy. 
um, whether it was elimination, whether it was some yeah person higher up. It's like this is. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Shigeru Miyamoto. I'm not lying. Every time he makes yeah, a decision so in his old age, he's like, That's so disappointing. he's like, what if we made this Paper Mario not fun? And the developers are like, could we please make it fun? And he's like, make it fun and I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> uh, so please make it not fun. Um, it was nice hearing uh, the Shigeru Miyamoto translator refer to Chris Pratt as Chris-san. That was fun. <laughs> um, and, like, here's here's the problem with this announcement. There's two more announcements. One is they talked about Splatoon 3 more, and one is they showed off Bayonetta 3 gameplay. I've been waiting for Bayonetta 3 gameplay, se- like everyone has, since 2017 when they announced Bayonetta 3. And I, like, couldn't focus on it because the whole time I was like, it's Chris well, it's, Pratt it's is Mario. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was just like, I was like, oh, this is Bayonetta 3, isn't it? And then it showed Bayonetta. I was like, oh, it is Bayonetta 3. Uh, and I was just like, that's so disappointing. Jack Black is Bowser, though. Oh, like, my mind is still thinking about yeah. Charlie Day yelling <laughs> as Luigi. And and, oh, and 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 meanwhile, like, Bayonetta's doing her thing on screen. And, like, uh, apparently, if I paid attention enough, I would have, like, there was a bunch of lore stuff in the trailer. I was just, like, my, like, like, more so in the Splatoon trailer. Because I've already, Splatoon 3 is going to be exactly the same as Splatoon 2, except better. Like, it's going to be a fucking great game. I'm going to buy it day one. But I was just, like... Seth Rogen, huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, the rest of the direct was ruined for me. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. No, it's fine. It's just... As, it which I totally a... understand. Like, I... Oh, they also... Sorry, there was one more thing. Uh, what were you going to say? No, I'm, I'm just... No, you're good. We can move on. No, it's just... It's... it's this This direct was such a flip-flop of, like, good versus bad, like, you know, energy. Because... I, uh, something I forgot to mention because it's technically not an announcement, so it wasn't in this article. About halfway through, they announced that the last Smash Brothers character will not be announced at this event. Oh, right, it's yeah. going to be announced uh, October 5th, and they're going to do it all in one. They're going to show the trailer. They're going to cut to him. He's going to show the character off, and then he's going to be like, peace out for, for ever. Right. Um, so that's exciting. But So it w- there was a real flip-flop of like the trailer. The direct started, and I was like, really? You're starting with? DLC for Monster Hunter that's not out for a whole year. And then they, like, showed a few things. I was like, oh, that's cool. Then they in- played the Smash Brothers music, and they were like, psych. And I was like, Ugh, okay. And then they announced all this really cool shit. Castlevania Advance, you know I'm here for that. Act Razor Renaissance, I've played it for four hours straight. I was so excited about it. And then Shigeru Miyamoto shows up, and I was like, no, 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 no. No, no, you did it. You ruined it. Everything's ruined now. And then they showed, like, two of the hypest trailers I've ever seen. Um... And they stole my Kirby idea. <laughs> it was just a v- wild roller coaster. Like, taking a step back, take, like, you know, zooming out a bit, yeah. it was an amazing Nintendo Direct. It was really good. It was action packed. But zooming back in, like, such a roller coaster of emotions. Like, w- 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 Chris Pratt is Mario. <laughs> I, don't, I have nothing more nuanced to say other than that. It was a lot to take in. Um,. Uh, so, we are going to rapid fire these releases, and then we're going to get to our segment, um, which I have uh, intentionally not told you anything about. Mm. So, uh, September 14th saw the release of Death Loop, and this marks the last time I will ever have to talk about Death Loop. <laughs> uh, September 16th saw the release of two indie games. One is called Eastward, it's apparently another Earthbound inspired video game. Uh, I played a lot of those at that point, at this point. Uh, So I'll probably get to it eventually. The other one was Skatebird that they showed off at E3. It's a racing, uh, 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 skateboarding game where you play as birds and there's licensed Weezer music in the game. Didn't know that part. Uh, 17th saw the release of Deltarune Chapter 2. We already talked about that. The 21st saw the release of Kenna, Bridge of Spirits. This is one of those games that I was joking would never come out. Uh, But it's here uh, and it looks neat. Uh, I have not played it. Uh, it seems like a game I would like, uh, but there's so many games out right now, including what came out on the 23rd, which was Diablo 2 Resurrected, uh, which is a game that I own but I've not played yet. Emery already talked about that earlier in the podcast. Uh, se- that same day, we have already talked about uh, we have Act Razor, Renaissance, and Castlevania Advanced Collection. Definitely going to play the shit out of both of those at some point. And then the 24th saw the release of Lost Judgment, which is a sequel to Judgment, which is a spin-off of the Yakuza series. Um, so there's that. So welcome to our segment. Uh, it doesn't have a name, but essentially Chris and I have been 
making video games. So here's how the segment works. There's two... I have two lists in front of me. I'm not going to reveal to you what they are. Yeah. But one of the lists is video game genres, and one of the list is what well, the other list is much longer, and it's it's IPs. So essentially, we're going to mm. pick one of each, and we're going to make a blank video game based off of blank. Mm -hmm. So to mm -hmm. give you some examples, um, we made a uh, we we made a video game a, a beat 'em up based off of blockbuster video called Blockbusters. <laughs> uh, we made uh, a uh, Power Rangers racing game. We made a Courage of Cowardly Dog hack and slash. We made a third person shooter based off Goop, and the game was called This Video Game Smells Like My Vagina. <laughs> uh, this is probably the one I'm the most proud of. We made a uh, dentist appointment game uh, that is also a sandbox, and it's called Two Floors. <laughs> um, so that's how the segment is played. Um, <laughs> here's what we're going to do. Emery, you yeah. pick a number between 1 and 23. 19. 19. Pick again. <laughs> <laughs> pick a different one. Uh, Might have uh, you pick uh, a, a couple. Let's just do uh, 9. In that case, we'll take 9. Ten, okay, ten. 9 is good. 9 we haven't done yet. Uh, now pick a number from 1 to 50. 27. 27. Oh, my God, Emery. Okay. All right. So, uh, number nine is platformer. Okay. I did not specify 2D or 3D intent on purpose. All we right. will uh, figure that out on our own. Nice. And number, what did you say? Number 27 is uh, Norse mythology. So, <laughs> thank you for that. Ooh. Uh, this is your wheelhouse. Yeah. If you don't know... Um, if you're listening to this and you don't know this, I absolutely love Norse mythology. Recently found a professor of Norse mythology at the university who works at the University of Colorado. He has a YouTube channel that I've been legitimately watching. He uh, has a book that I just bought that I've been reading. Um, I love Norse mythology, legitimately. Um, so we have to make a platformer about Norse mythology. Okay. Um, I think the first question we have to answer is, is it going to be 2D or 3D? Because I feel like 3D is probably better for this type of thing, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't be opposed to talking about a 2D platformer. So what's what what is what do you have in your mind when you're talking about 3D being better for for this kind I of I just feel like the like environments could be more Okay, I can showy. get into that. I can yeah. I would love for a large focus on environments to be in here because yeah. we have so many different worlds we can access through this. Right. And I would love to get in depth on I'm thinking I'm thinking here. Kirby style with the levels. I think like yeah. level one like world one is four levels and that's Midgard and then world two mm. is you know, Moosbelheim or whatever. And we just do we have nine worlds. Uh, I love the concept we this is we have a, a great framing for this around the world tree and yes, like yeah. And so, like, with that as our concept of the map, like, and, like, the world and what we're going to and passing around in the different realms. And oh. then if you if you have to go to each realm in a specific order, the story kind of writes itself. Because, like, yeah. how do you, you know, at some point you have to go to Helheim. And that could be the point in the story where, like, all your progress has halted. But not really, because this is the next mm. level in the game. Um, and I think that level one is obviously Midgard and level nine is obviously Asgard. Yep. Yep. Um yeah, I love that. Yeah, I yeah, we started Midgard. It's a familiar environment for a player. We're like focusing on getting used to mechanics. We're still showing off some landscapes and stuff. Who do you? Here's but. an interesting thought. Who do you play as? Do you play as a create a character, That's or is there a certain demigod that would be interesting enough to play as? I guess this is more a question for me. Um, I like the concept of going with a demigod. I don't know if you have one that can align itself to a story in particular. The one that the first one that comes to mind is Magni, uh, one of Thor's children. Yeah. There's Magni and Modi. Modi. Um, yeah. I think playing as Magni would be interesting enough because you're kind of like Magni and Modi are kind of like a subclass of demigods where like Thor, like you could consider Thor a demigod because he's technically the child of Odin, but Odin is the god of all gods and. Mm -hmm which makes Thor a god, which kind of makes Magni Modi, like, demigods twice removed as far as, like, where they stand on the god-to-demigod 
uh, like t- t- tier list, as it were. Yeah. Um, so I think there, I think Magny would be an interesting case where he's like, he could be powerful, but it wouldn't be weird if he like wasn't as powerful as like. Let's say you have like yeah. a boss fight with Fenrir, right? And it's like, well, what what are these power levels? And it's like, if we use Magni, it would be more easier to be like, no, this makes sense that Fenrir would be a pretty tough fight uh, for someone like Magni. I like that. And then, yeah, that al- allows room for scaling of getting different specific abilities if we want to add that within the platform or, like, um, I, uh, adding in other kinds of abilities or, like, uh, jumps or getting in different environments and then adding on to things within his, his character and what he can do yeah. in there over time. Um, is there from your knowledge of mythology, a s- an overall storyline that can make sense for this? Um, we could go with the whole... I, I don't know if I'm super interested in this, but we could go with a post-Ragnarok, m- my dad is dead, but my mm-hmm. brother got the hammer type thing. Okay. And, but I want it because I feel like it. I deserve it. Um, but we could also do a... You know, maybe we play as a younger... Magni, maybe like a teenage Magni, mm-hmm. and maybe ooh yeah 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 okay we we play as teenage Magni, um and our our dad being Thor wants us to go through uh like trials oh I like to this. see if we're like what because because Magni and Modi's whole fucking life is which one of us is going to get the hammer wor- worthiness yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. which yeah. one is going to get the hammer when our dad dies in Ragnarok right um and you know based on what story you read neither of them get them one of them you know doesn't matter but i think i think if the if the ending was not as finite as yes i have mjolnir i think if the ending was like my, my dad did me had me do a test and i passed and then like at the end of the game you find out that modi was doing the test too mm. or something and like maybe you know doesn't matter at this point but like maybe he did better than you or quicker than you like so you think you're achieving it but you know and then maybe the final battle is if there is combat in this game, I'm I'm picturing. I don't see why there couldn't be combat. I, uh, I, yeah. But maybe the final boss is Modi. It's like now fight your brother. That would be interesting. But they're not they're not fighting for the hammer. They're just fighting for like their father's respect, essentially. Mm-hmm. Plus, that sounds like something Thor would do to his to his children. <laughs> <laughs> and I like this concept, yeah, because that allows us to to really easily bring in trials. And explain like, the reasoning for trying to prove themselves across these different realms. Right. Yeah. 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 There's uh, a. There's a. There's a. I. I like the idea of. Whoops! I stumbled into Helheim, and now I have to find my way out. So I'm. 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 I'm just. I'm into. I'm. Uh, envisioning like maybe there's eight trials, but there's nine levels, mm. and one of them's Helheim, and mm-hmm. the Helheim level isn't the Helheim trial. It's like. Find your way back to never intend. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Why would yeah send him into hell? And it, we could even do something along the lines of like, I'm in Muspelheim, and I was uh, the next step was Fardalfheim. I have found myself in Helheim, and because I am in Helheim, the next level is going to have to be Niflheim, and then we'll eventually circle back to Svartalfheim. Uh-huh. Because Niflheim and Helheim are sort of like they were one realm, and then they split into two. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I think I think. As far as like you know, what does the platformer like look like? Where that's not really, you know, we don't have to do that. We don't have to be like so jumping. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I feel like, I feel like, you know, f- f- focus on platforming with some combat. Maybe each level has a mm-hmm. boss fight, and like Norse mythology is filled with things that could be boss fights. I mean, just right off the top of my head, we have Loki's three children. We have uh, we have Fenrir's children. We have uh. Um, you know, we have the horse, we have, and then we could even have, you know, some like, in this trial, you have to beat this other demigod that mm. you've probably heard of. Yeah, I, I like, like that, it. I like that a lot. Yeah. Here's my favorite part of the segment. What is this video game called? Ooh. Because <laughs> uh. currently I have no, I have no ideas in my head for uh, what it could be called okay so what elements do we have here we're traveling the realms we're, we're trying to trying to impress thor impress playing thor as magni as magni 
I think I think the word trials should be in there. Trials. The. I think I think what I, where my head is at. I think I think title colon the trials of Magni. The trials of Magni. That's what I'm thinking. And I was I was thinking of Hades. Because Hades is obviously a game based off a different mythology, yeah. and yeah. it's named after the. Oh, it's named after the character's dad, I guess, right? The place isn't called Hades. The place is called something else. Never mind. I was going to say we can't. Mm, I don't know. It's it's odd because this car- this game takes place in all realms. Mm-hmm. S- and there's no, like, I guess Yggdrasil. I feel like Yggdrasil, the Trials of Magni, is a bad name. <laughs> uh, I don't like that. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Um could it could it be like Thor's trials or like the trials of the thunder god or or something like that he's going through and so it's like Magni colon um something about like I'm trying to figure out a way of framing this so it's yeah. an understanding of what we're doing and why you you're trying to put the the elevator pitch in the title. Yes. Yeah. Which we don't have to do. No, but I like that though, because it, it's it would definitely. Yeah, it would it would definitely work. I think we just gotta get there. Maybe like. I don't like, the trials of Thor only because now we have two names in the mm-hmm. title, um, and we can't just call it the trials of Thor, yeah. um, because. You don't play as Thor, so that would yeah. be a little. I mean, that would fall in line with Hades, but uh, where you play as what's that fool's name? I forget his name. You don't play as Hades. Zagreus. Zagreus. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You play as Zagreus, and you play in Tartarus, and Hades yes. is a small part of the game, but he's also the title. Right. And I can only assume the final boss. I haven't beat Hades yet. Uh, he um, is the final boss. Okay. Good. That's yeah. good. <laughs> um. 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 Man. Okay. Um. We call it the Bible Game Two, <laughs> <laughs> a sequel to the beloved PC game, the Bible Game. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh. oh God. Um. Uh, trials of the Worthy. Trials. Of um, in- inheritance, um, uh, um, just tr- I'm just trying to think of words that can potentially be associated yeah. with this concept. Trials of the Worthy is not bad because I feel like people will get it because I feel like the Marvel there's, there's universe out there. Yeah, in, in, in what? Yeah, I feel like Worthy is the word most associated with that damn hammer in the Marvel <laughs> universe, at least. That's true. Um, you know, other than the words Thor. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, yeah, maybe that's it. Do we like that? Trials of the Worthy? Trials of the Worthy? Or do we want to get... Do you want Magni in there? It, mm, I do. It, what, what's, what's stopping me is that like, if we call it Trials of the Worthy colon Magni, then it almost sounds like a spin-off, oh. but it also implies that there's going to be a Modi Other, game. Yeah. Um, and I kind of like the reveal of like, I mean, maybe you play as Modi in New Game Plus, right? Maybe you do the same thing except as him, and it's like he was doing the same thing too, uh, and you can see what he was doing. But I like the late game reveal that Modi was also doing the trials, and now you have to fight him. Yeah. Um, I like that concept a lot, actually. Yeah. So maybe just the trials of the worthy. Maybe we leave it there. Okay. Because I think a colon would... <laughs> Trials of the Worthy colon, a Norse mythology adventure. <laughs> Just make it super, <laughs> super, like, NES style. What's the, what's the name for the Norse pantheon? What, what, what kinds of gods are they specifically? Like, there's a name that encompasses that, right? Oh, the, uh, Aesir? Aesir? Well, there's the Aesir and the Vanir. And Aesir from Asgard and Vanir's from uh, uh, Vanaheim. Got it. And okay. there was the like 
six hundred year war or whatever. To basically, basically the war was who gets Asgard. <laughs> um, but a, uh, Magni would in fact be an Aesir because he is the spawn of okay. two other Aesirs. Got it. Uh, Why? What are you thinking? I didn't know if that contended at all. I'm good though. I think I li- I like Trials of the Worthy. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. So, uh, let me let me write that down before I forget. Whoops, that's not the right one. This is always the problem when it, when I, with these segments because now I want these games to fucking exist. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, this is the problem with uh <laughs> with Cool Games Inc. Right. <laughs> so what did we do? We did platformer. Which I'm pretty sure we've never done before, right? Yeah, we've never done that. Platformer, Norse, mythology, and then it is called The Trials of the Worthy. That's good. That's a good... I like the way that looks now that I've written it out. Hmm. Um, and that brings us up to ten. Ten games that we've created in this Heck segment. Yeah. Um... Exciting stuff. Um, yeah, that's I, I love that segment, and I'm glad that you liked it too. Um, so, yeah, that'll do it for us here mm-hmm. on uh, the Thunder and Lightning uh, Gaming News Podcast. Um, just a reminder, just a friendly reminder, uh, that when Nintendo decided to make <laughs> a movie based off of the Mario IP that they got Chris Pratt to voice <laughs> Mario the Plumber. A 40-year-old plumber <laughs> from New York City <laughs> is going to be voiced by Christopher Pratt. <laughs> uh, and that's all. That's really the biggest takeaway from this uh, yeah. this Newsweek, this podcast, oh this whole channel, really. Just keep in mind that. Keep in mind that. When you're, when you're almost asleep tonight and you're like, oh, man, I have such a long day at work. When you're almost asleep, just remember that Seth Rogen is going to voice Donkey Kong and he's going to do just probably just a terrible job. A, yeah. uh, and until next time, I've been Thunder. I'm Dr. Payne. Dr. Payne can't console himself. (laughs) uh, And we'll see you next time. (laughs) Thank you for listening and watching. And if you like what you see, please be sure to subscribe. Our channel is daily uploads from podcasts to video essays, let's plays to skip. Be sure to find us on Twitch and Patreon. Our theme song is Sunny Day by Froggy and the Friendship, and our let's play intro is Sunny Bit by the same band. Link to all these in the description below. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.